Hello viewers, Super GT here. Yesterday we had a state of play for Gran Turismo 7. It went through loads of new gameplay and information. So very exciting times indeed. Over the course of this video, I'm going to go through all the gameplay, the information, and give you my thoughts on it. Now, in the build-up to the release of the game on March 4th, I'm going to be making plenty of videos about it. So please do get yourself subscribed. So there's over 400 cars in the game, confirmed. Many of which you can see here. Now, I'm going to make separate videos regarding the tracks, the cars, everything. So I'm not going to go into too much detail here. But yeah, 400 cars confirmed. So there you'll notice we have DMC, probably the DeLorean. Go 88 miles an hour, go back in time, something like that. We can take a look here at some of the European brands. So, well, some of the British ones. We have BAC and Radical, and that's pretty interesting. We don't have Lotus, don't have Bentley. So for those wishing for the new Bentley GT3 car, well, it's not going to be in there at release, at least. Uh, so down there we have Brembo. So I don't know if you can drive around a brake caliper, but they're there. So in total, more than 400 cars and there will be DLC. Okay, in terms of the tracks, we have 34 locations, 97 configurations or layouts. We did not get confirmation of Apricot Hill. This is something we were kind of expecting because of the find your line line thing. Um, but yeah, that was not confirmed, but we did get lots of juicy sort of gameplay, high speed ring, Daytona and Trial Mountain in this in this trailer. Okay, so now the world map. Let's just take a look at this and go through what each of these 14 icons are. So down here we have showcase, which is where you'll get your liveries, photos, replays, that kind of thing. Escapes is the photo. Up here we have mission races. Uh, the cone is the license test. The Coliseum here is uh, World Circuits. Up here you have your garage. In the middle is the GT Cafe, it's kind of like a hangout area. And then down at the bottom you have the tuning shop where you upgrade your cars. And then in terms of buying cars, you have Brand Central, which is this icon. Then you have the used car dealership. And then to the right of that is the legendary car dealership where you buy the really old, rare classics. So that leaves three other icons. So this is sport mode. This one is multiplayer where you can set up races with with your friends online then this one would be custom races now at one point during the trailer they did actually show this map which is actually slightly different you see like the used car dealership is at the back of the garage is a bit more to the right so i don't know which one is the actual one or if you can choose different ones where the layout is slightly different so yeah the world map pretty cool i mean this is very much a um homage if you like or a throwback to the original games where um, the single player career mode was a very big aspect of the game. And that's going to be very true of this one from what I can see. Now you're going to start off with, it looks like 20,000 credits to buy yourself a box like this. And this is just traditional Gran Turismo. This is just the way it always works. You don't have much money. It's hard to earn money. From what I can tell, it looks like it's pretty tricky to earn money in this game. And... Um, Start off with a good old Sunday Cup. I mean, I'm getting nostalgia times a million right now. Start off, buy yourself a cheap car, grind your way through the levels, get um, better cars slowly but surely. Um, so for those looking for the great single player experience, I think you, you're going to get it. Okay, so they confirmed that you can do multi-class racing. You see your LMP1s and GT3s. They said you can do that in the custom race menu. Whether or not you can do it in multiplayer, I don't know. But let's hope that you can. That'd be pretty cool. Okay, the license test. Now, this is always, again, another big aspect of Gran Turismo. So one of the uh, licenses here on Dragon Trail Seaside. Now, what I would say is that this one was done fairly easy. So it gets a gold 14.1, gold time 14.5. Now, I don't know if that's just really easy or the person who did this is just the GOAT. It looks like this player did this quite easily. I hope the difficulty is quite tricky because the classic license tests were always very hard to complete so you can look at some of the licenses here um, at the bottom it shows you get a reward for getting all bronze and all gold so there is some incentive to try to get all of the golds other than just pure pride i tried to look at all of these licenses to see if there was any revelations of any other tracks couldn't really see anything but yeah we get you know laguna Seca spa monza catalonia Tokyo expressway but we already knew that those were in the game and then we have mission races. This is pretty cool. So this is sort of like little set pieces. It's kind of, I mean, this was in GT Sport to an extent. Um, so here 
we have drag racing at special stage route x they have a little meter at the top left of the screen as you can see so it gives you an indication of where you are compared to the other car so of course you'll have to manage your traction your wheel spin your gear changes and then try to beat your opponent as this guy clearly just does and then of course uh, drifting as well so the missions look like they'll test you in different ways drag racing drifting i'm sure there'll be other other elements as well okay let's talk about the multiplayer because this is a big aspect of the game if there's any part of the game i'm worried about it would be the multiplayer firstly there is two uh, two player split screen i did just want to pause here actually you can see that the top says 34 courses we we know that just trying to look at this list of tracks nothing new there compared to what i've seen before so you can see high speed ring deep forest daytona all of these tracks on this list here we've seen in other screenshots in other trailers so there's nothing new there they then confirm that you can make lobbies you see this is like a meeting place room two where they've invited presumably their friends if they have any and then you have sport mode as well so this is a daily race menu so daily races are going to be a thing we don't know if they're going to go back to doing them every day or every week like they are on Gran Turismo Sport at the moment but looking at this in this race at least there's 12 players it says race A and normally in race A on Gran Turismo Sport there's 12 players as well so that perhaps suggests that the amount of players is exactly the same as in GT Sport with no improvement if that's the case then it is what it is I would have liked to see more players you can also see the driver rating and sportsmanship rating looks very much the same so this looks like a low level lobby they're all rated eb or db ec so i'm sure there'll be lots of carnage in this race that's about to happen here and also like um sport you have the qualifying time and then that'll rank your order on the grid so the multiplayer on this game doesn't look too different than gt sport um of course we'll have new tracks and cars to play with but just in terms of the fundamentals of the way it works the sport mode the custom lobbies it doesn't really look too different from what i can tell so as long as it's a stable experience then i suppose that's not such a bad thing but it doesn't look much different penalty system they didn't really show anything so we don't really know what that's like but yeah multiplayer not a huge amount of info on it they kind of just left it fairly sparse so we'll have to see when the game comes out exactly what they do with it okay in terms of the graphics now graphics are always kind of a, a big thing gran turismo they pride themselves on how how good the game looks so you've probably heard the term ray tracing which will make the uh, the detail even higher than before there's actually two modes of um of like graphics in this game one which will be for gameplay which won't include ray tracing and you'll be able to run at 60 fps in that mode and then there'll be a second mode where you can turn on ray tracing this will be for like replays photo mode that kind of thing so either way, I think the game will look really good. I'm, I'm sure, I mean, just looking at this, if you watch this trailer in 4K, it, it does look amazing. But I guess the main question really relates to the performance on PlayStation 4, because a lot of people will be playing this on PS4, and uh, all this gameplay is captured on PS5. So we don't know the difference between the two consoles. Okay, next up, tyre and weather simulation. Now, first off, just look at Kaz here. Just look how, pa look how powerful he looks. Um, I'm sure as he controls the weather, I reckon he could beat Thanos. So they gave us a lecture about how clouds move and stuff like that. But the bottom line of all of it is that the dynamic time and weather will affect how you have to race, how you have to drive. Uh, it's very accurately modelled compared to reality. So how the clouds move in Japan, it will move like that in the game in Japan. You get the point. So the weather, the conditions will affect the track and it will affect therefore how you have to drive. So they may just look at the stars for a while but the important thing that i took from this section was that the way that the track develops will affect how the car handles so the grip will change the engine performance will change and the slipstream will change so three important factors which will change based on the conditions obviously tire grip that's kind of an obvious one as the track gets wetter you have to change your line change the way you brake you can see here this kind of gives you a demonstration of how the track dries and how it gets wetter as well so it will dry in you no know, on the racing line as you can see here all of the cars going through here uh, at sakuba the track will dry at a certain point and then you'll have to adapt the way that you drive so another thing they mentioned about uh, the dynamic weather is the way that the track dries and and gets wetter 
so the place of the track that will normally get wet as you can see on the edge of the track you can see there's a puddle forming by those cones um so so i guess it's up to us as drivers to work out where are the puddles let's try and avoid them and oh it's actually getting wetter the puddles normally form there so in a minute i'm gonna have to start avoiding this line things like that so again it just adds another element to the driving and to the racing but yes yeah, so very interesting as well the slipstream and the engine power will change based on the conditions and something else you have to bear in mind is on this screen here it's the weather radar you can see at the bottom right of the screen so this is red bull ring you can see it's raining or it has been raining and at the bottom we have the weather radar so just like checking your radar for incoming rammers you'll have to check the weather radar for incoming rain this is a very important element and i think this will be really fun when um you're mid-race you see a cloud are you going to take a chance go in the pit lane get some wet tires box for enters maybe not uh, for those wondering the car being driven is the bac mono uh, this is another example at sukuba you see again you have the rain meter just down there uh, so like 46 percent rain actually it probably isn't percent because look at it here it's over 100 and it's actually changing very quickly so i'm not sure exactly what that represents but obviously the higher the number the wetter it is in some regard so you'll notice about the weather radar on this gameplay it actually has the map as well the the track map so maybe you can turn the track map on and off for a reference or for a scale of the expanse of the map you're looking at but yeah overall in terms of the weather and the dynamic changes i think it looks really cool i think it's going to really add another aspect to the game rather than the track just being the same all of the time so you know before all we had to really manage was our tires and our fuel now we have to manage conditions as well so there's a lot more to think about and i think it'll just add really another layer of um, intensity to the driving so they've added this pretty interesting mode called music rally so for those of you who don't know what this is think of it like a checkpoint racer where you have to get through as many checkpoints as you can without running out of time instead of time though you have beats you see the number dropping and um you have to get through as many checkpoints as you can before running out basically so here's some gameplay at trial mountain something i was very curious about here to get a gold it's a uh, 5.34 miles now trial mountain is about 3.38 miles it was actually it's a bit longer than the previous version it's a bit more stretched out but it's 3.38 miles okay right hear me out hear me out so you'd have to do maybe a lap and a half to get the gold time all right cool but look at the record 7516 miles so i don't know what sweat lord has been playing this but they've done a lot of laps because if we drag in a calculator we can deduce that this person has done was it 3.38 miles this person has done approximately 2,223 laps of this track to get that record. So I, I think this is a bit of a challenge, isn't it? When the game comes out, we'll have to do the 2,223 laps of Trial Mountain. I, th I quite like it. I, I quite like this little idea that you see that going through a checkpoint, it gets 30 extra beats. Just have to go through as many as possible. Try and do 2,000 laps. They also teased music replay, so... In the replays you can turn on this mode where the camera angles will match the music being played so you can have sort of like a dynamic sort of music video to your race which is pretty cool okay so they mentioned some some stuff about the adaptive triggers and the haptic feedback so this would be very good for controller players but also for wheel players as well so one of the things they mentioned is just how you'll be able to really feel the elements of the car especially understeer wheel spin uh tires locking up and and just the general movement of the cars you see the cars like rocking up and down slightly so it's things like that you've had to feel a lot more accurately through the controller and they've just taken the overall feel of the game to another level so perhaps one criticism you could level at gran turismo sometimes is that the physics maybe feel a little bit bland i hope that this development will make it feel a little bit more alive and exciting so some gameplay of uh, daytona um, so the super speedway we kind of knew that that was already in but yeah the super speedway is going to be there so we have at least two configurations for daytona you have the infield course i don't know about these there's a sports car course there's actually sort of two infield configurations there so i don't know if we'll get both of those but we've at least got one of the infields and then the oval okay so tuning and car customization don't we love it now each car will have approximately 60 tunable parts or upgradable parts 
So you can turn your average Joe car into an absolute monster. And they demonstrate that here with this side-by-side -side comparison. The left one is a stock VW and the one on the right is the tuned up beast. And you see it just how much quicker it is. It's kind of obvious. Yeah, it's way quicker. And they're going into the first corner brand's hatch at nearly 150 miles an hour, which I can tell you is probably very scary in a car like that. And something else that has been noted is if you look up there in the top left corner, engine model is a Porsche. Now, that's a VW. So does this confirm engine swaps? We'll have to find out. But that is an interesting point. So, of course, you have upgrades to make the car faster. Um, but then you have all well, the customization options here to make the car look better. So loads of different wings and things. 650 different aero parts in the game uh, 130 different wheels and there's 1200 different color variations so quite a lot of customization options so roll cages diffusers as we just saw and uh, wide body i mean this animation take a look at this <laughs> take a look at this animation how that's technically accurate yeah they just Mechanics just widen the car by pulling on it, obviously. Now, the livery editor, you can start editing in places that you wouldn't be able to do before. So you put stuff on the windows and you see on the front window, there's a window sticker at the top as well. So, yeah, livery editor taking another level. And I think this would be really cool for making a racy looking car, you know, making a stock car, make making it look very racy like a GT3 car. So let's just take a look at this menu here. This is GT Auto. This is the tuning shop. Car wash costs 50, oil change 400, engine overhaul 100,000. So you can see at the bottom there conditions, engine, oil, body, rigidity. So he just pays 50 credits there for a car wash. Doesn't really make a dent in these 4 million credits. And then uh, change the oil as well, even though they were, even though the oil was already in excellent condition. But can't be too safe, can you? Okay, so in terms of buying cars, this is a huge part of the game. It's really the car collector's dream this kind of game gran turismo now you have the car dealership or brand central where you can buy cars from 2001 onwards so pretty much modern cars you then have the used car dealership where you can buy secondhand cars now this is quite interesting taking a look at this now used car dealership it kind of in a way reflects the real life market to to an extent in the sense that a lot of Secondhand cars these days are actually very expensive, like way more than they used to cost. You can see they're like a Countach at the bottom, 700,000. Testarossa, 400,000 nearly. The Stratos, 500,000. So some of the cars will just be cheaper because it's used. Some of them will just be expensive because it's a rare car. Um, it shows the, the mileage or the kilometerage. And that uh, list of cars will change on a daily basis. So they'll swap some cars in and out. So it's taken an interesting way of splitting sort of the newer cars from 2001 onwards into brand central so they're separate and then you've got the used cars the old slightly older cars which obviously you can't buy brand new anymore you have to buy them second hand and that's how it's reflected in the game so at this point here the player tries to buy nissan r32 and he's only got 20,000 credits he's just started the game so he realizes he hasn't got enough money and then suddenly he's got a million so i don't know where he's got that million from then he goes and buys a kuntash is there going to be a money cheat who knows that guy's just borrowed a million off of someone um, and then to buy the very rare cars, you have the legendary car dealership. As Stephanie explains, you can take a look at some of the prices, the eye-watering money you will have to depart with to buy some of these cars. You know, 18 million, the Porsche 917K. So I think like old GT games, it is actually going to be quite tricky to really own a lot of the cars because money isn't going to be easy to come by unless there's another Lewis Hamilton DLC. Where you can get 100 mil but if there's you know if that's not a thing then i don't think it'd be easy just to you know go out there and just buy all of the cars that's going to actually be a very difficult thing to do as ever scapes big part of the game photo mode it's just going to look really good especially with the ray tracing mode enabled and then showcase this is basically the equivalent of discover on gran turismo sport this is where you can download car liveries suit helmet liveries uh, watch people's replays look at their photos uh, that kind of thing so nothing too new here i don't think not that i could see really so yeah that was a look at the gran turismo 7 state of play really good to get loads of new information about it 
Um, I am going to be making more in-depth videos about each of the aspects of the game, like the multiplayer, the cars, the tracks, etc, etc. So please do get yourself subscribed for those in the build-up to the game. And then, of course, when it comes out, I'll be making plenty of content about it. I will also be live streaming again very soon, which you'll be very pleased to hear. So my overall thoughts on GT7 based on this trailer, based on this live stream, is that I think the single player looks really, really good, re looks really polished. I think for those who really like the career mode, the single player career mode, you're going to have a great time. Multiplayer, I'm not going to say it's going to be bad, but they don't, they haven't really shown a huge amount. They kind of glossed over it, didn't really give us much information about it. So if, it, if there's any concern I have, it's really about the multiplayer. I don't think it'll be bad, but I just don't think it'll be hugely developed from GT Sport. But that remains to be seen. Hopefully I'm wrong. One of the other things as well is the GT3 cars especially. We haven't seen too much of the GT4 cars, but the GT3 cars, it doesn't look like there's too many new ones. So, you know, we've seen a new Audi and of course the Ford GTE. But apart from that, it doesn't look like there's much of an updated roster. It would have been nice to have like the Bentley GT3, the Ferrari 488, perhaps the McLaren 720S. It would have been nice to have a fresh set of updated GT3 cars. That would have been nice. Hopefully that can be added and it definitely can be added. Um, but yeah, those are a couple of my concerns. But overall, I'm really looking forward to this game. Really, really looking forward to it. I can't wait to get it. March 4th can't come soon enough. Please do let me know your thoughts. Are you looking forward to it? Are you going to pre-order it? Do you have concerns as well? And yeah, we're, we're close, guys. One month away and GT7 is going to be a thing on this channel for real. I'm going to be playing it. But in the meantime, have yourself an amazing day. Thank you for watching this video all the way through. Thank you um, for being amazing fans through GT Sport. We're going to move on to another game. Gonna going to absolutely be loving it and relishing it. Um, have a great day. I'll catch you around next time. Goodbye.